Um, Dina Hilliard, um, Tenderloin CBD. I'm not going to know it could be a project. Susie Wong, the San Francisco Health Industries. Mike Thor's Tenderloin Station. John Alton. Trudy Gerber with the Trust for Public Land. Katie Kincaid of Barbara Coast Consulting on behalf of Walton's. David? Oh. David Baker. Yeah. 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 Otto Duffy, I'm a resident a few blocks away from here. Susan Bryan, I'm a resident. I'm Ross with Barbara Coast also working with Walton's. Okay. Um, so we're, we are beginning with uh, item number two on the agenda. Everybody have an agenda at each one. Um, and that is Walgreens uh, Digital License Application for 135 Powell Street. And we will have uh, a presentation of a few minutes and then we'll have an opportunity not to make a speech. Please, everybody remember, but to ask questions. Well, first of all, I just wanted to, again, my name is Katie Kincaid, and uh, this is Joe Sean McKelling and, and Jaime Rossi over in, in the back corner. Um, so I wanted to thank all of you for the opportunity to, to come and speak about uh, the plans for 135 Powell. 135 Powell is a current existing Walgreens location. Um, many of you may have uh, been there and before. Uh, what uh, we are, Walgreens is hoping to do with 135 Powell is turn it into uh, the third flagship store in the country. Um, there are two flagships uh, currently that have been built. Um, one is in Chicago, which is the home base of, of Walgreens, and one is in New York City. And so this would be just the third in the entire nation of, of this concept. Um, one of the things we passed around are, uh, is a packet of images. Um, they've got before and after. The before image is of the existing uh, Walgreens at 135 Powell. The after is um, are images that come from the Chicago flagship store. Um, they are the flagship is uh, uh, San Francisco flagship will be modeled after the Chicago flagship, so it's very much a representation of what it will be. Um, the flagship uh, model is. Um, a really a whole new concept of wall, uh, concept of Walgreens. It's a whole kind of new experience, both in terms of customer experience in the store. Um, as you will see on the very first page, the, the first image is of the existing location, um, and the second one uh, you'll see is of, of the Chicago. It's the Chicago <coughs> store. It has a much bigger, um, more open feeling. For this location at 135 Powell, the plan is to. Um, uh, take over the upstairs as well, which is currently Lori's Diner. Lori's Diner will be moving to a new location in the area. Um, and so one thing to point out is it's it's in expanding in square footage. It's not going to be just a mirror of what the current Walgreens is, but just more square footage. It is really opening up the space as a whole. It's going to be, um, ceilings are much are going to be much uh, higher, wider aisles, a lot of natural light. The, the bottom floor will have a glass facade. Um, so as you can see, kind of as indicative of this image, it's just going to be a much more open, airy feeling. Um, there's also going to be a much wider selection, um, both um, in quality and quantity of the products offered. One thing that um, is going to be really fantastic is the up market. It's going to feature um, a large selection of not only uh, um, freshly made sandwiches, salads, wraps, but also there's going to be a, um, um, a, a, a good amount of fresh produce. Um, so one thing that in speaking with community members that we have identified as, uh, as unfortunately lacking in the community is, is the accessibility to grocery. And so this will provide a lot more than what you can find at some of the, the corner stores already there. Um, also, just in terms of accessibility, everything will obviously be ADA accessible. It'll just be a much friendlier, um, welcoming experience to all members of the community. Um, uh, also, a, another fantastic community benefit is the fact that in um, making this investment in, and it being a much larger store, it means the addition of anywhere from 20 to 30 new jobs for the community. 
Um, so that's the general uh, uh, overview of, of, the, of the flagship. Now, one thing that is a part of this concept, which is one thing that we wanted to address today, um, there has been um, some questions about, is the component of um, alcohol sales, of, 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 of adult beverages. So um, um, the plan is that less than 5% of the uh, store's square footage will be dedicated to the sale of alcoholic beverages. Um, the types of alcoholic beverages that will be sold are um, very much catered to folks who have a bit more of a, a um, as you could say, a sophisticated palate. They are higher end products. Um, in, in developing this concept, a lot of it is, as we've said, in, uh, uh, a more welcoming and a nicer a um, Walgreens experience. And a part of that is the sell of alcohol, and, and, and as that component, um, we are, they've really modeled the previous stores to, in the wine section, to look like a wine store. The alcohol is all top shelf. The, um, the beer is, is craft beer, um, a lot, you know, some of which will be from um, local breweries. Um, one thing to note is that um, in the flagship locations, both in Chicago and New York, a focus has been to um, really tie in the local flair. And they have made a concentrated effort to incorporate local products that are, um, you know, well, uh, you know, local products from the community. So we have not yet pinpointed exactly what those will be, but both in terms of adult beverages and in terms of general products, food, things of that nature, there will be a showcase of San Francisco um, Bay Area made products. So um, those are some of the main components. I wanted to turn the floor over to Sean. Sean um, is a, a, a pharmacist at Walgreens, and so he can speak a little bit to... Um, so um, again, I'm, I'm the pharmacy supervisor for Walgreens here in downtown, and I actually used to live over at Turk and Larkin when I went to school at UCSF, so I'm very familiar with the neighborhood over here. And one of the things I really want to make, uh, bring forward to you guys is that, you know, Walgreens has always had a very big commitment to the communities in the area. I know we worked a lot with Captain Garrity in regards to organized retail crime, um, using greeters in the stores to make sure that our um, patrons are safe and welcome to our locations. But also, from a pharmacy standpoint, it's really being out there and outreaching um, for flu shots and, and those type of things. This year was a really great year for us. We work with Health and Human Services to really target organizations that need our help here in the Tenderloin area. So I, I think I gave 60 flu shots at the Coalition for the Homeless over on Church Street. Um, so, um, but along with that community commitment, as far as outreach, what I'm really proud about is that Walgreens really has a commitment policy and procedure-wise to make sure that we're a good partner um, in selling adult beverages. So every single person that works in the store is trained on how to sell alcohol, including the pharmacist. Um, there are certain policy procedures that they renew every single year. Um, some of the things that are really stand out for me is that no minor can sell alcohol or stock alcohol or handle the alcohol, as well as um, anyone under 40, our policy is very strict, and if you're under 40, we card. Um, but being very advanced in technology, also we also have a system that we also rely upon um, which blocks out uh, certain times of sales. If it was a 24-hour store, it wouldn't allow sales between 2 and 6, I believe, the hours that are there. But also, you know, as far as IDs and dates of birth, it actually does a lot of that work for us. So a lot of that, you could say human error is sometimes taken out because you know, the staff follows the policies and procedures and, and again, we try to be very responsible. Um, in that particular area. Um, kind of going off what Katie said, what I'm really excited about as a pharmacist is that this is a completely new concept for Walgreens. Um, as she said, this is one of three areas in the entire country that are going to be allowed to do this. So this is not a typical Walgreens. This is everything from all of the different um, areas from the Uptown Market to the fresh baked goods to all that stuff, but even the pharmacy is being remodeled and it's a different model that we're using. So this is a in the concept, and um, adult beverage is, is part of that. So let's see if there are questions. Anyone? Yes. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, so the current store does not sell liquor? Correct. Okay, so if you were to not get this liquor license, what would happen in terms of the construction? Would it be adjusted, or would it not happen? Or? Well, 
you know, quite frankly, you know, the it, as modeled off of the other stores um, in Chicago and New York, alcohol, adult beverages has been a component. So if that were to uh, not be permissible here, I, I don't think either of us can say with certainty what the next steps would be, but it would be certainly be something that we would have to take back and reevaluate what, what the process would be. David. Well, are you going to give us an opportunity to give feedback to these I'm, people? You want to ask, do you have a question, clarification? Well, well okay. Uh, no, yeah. I don't have a question. I okay. do have a comment. Brief comment. Well, it's not, it's not brief. It I, uh, I, don't, I don't support this project at all for, for <laughs> one reason, is that Walgreens isn't a good civic uh, Citizen, you're highly profitable. Uh, your your merchandise is priced too high. Your sales, uh, uh, when you advertise merchandise, you have yeah, a David, limited. We're only talking about the liquor license application, not not Walgreens in general. Well, I think that that certainly should influence the decision about the uh, alcohol license. There. Uh, but uh, you don't need, we don't need a flagship store and we don't need an alcohol license. And, you know, speaking from an elderly perspective, you do a big, you're very dependent on your prescription uh, business. You don't have scales. You tore out all the... Uh, David, David, please. Maybe you can tell them that afterwards. Uh, no, the, the community oh, needs to hear... You know, my comment. Well, let's see if we have time left on if other people have questions. Yeah. Sure. Uh, how will uh, Walgreens okay. mitigate the impacts of the off-sale liquor license? Well, proposed off-sale liquor license. So, um, Walgreens has always, in all of the various communities that it has served, um, has, has always um, been an active community partner, both in terms of working with the, 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 the Tenderloin Police Station and the local police stations to work hand in hand in terms of um, uh, you know, um, uh, crime prevention as it relates to either, either retail theft or um, you know, as it moves along with, with, with the sale of alcohol. I think that um, you know, it has been it, is, uh, it has been a commitment that Walgreens has always had and will continue to have. Can I respond to that, Katie? I think, I think what you're asking, sir, is you know, what, if Walgreens was to get the application, what mitigations or what, are, you know, what would Walgreens be willing to do? Certainly there's a couple of things. One is, sorry about that. One is that we would work closely with the police department on whatever types of um, restrictions or conditions would be put on the uh, alcohol license and we would make sure that that is something that is you know specific to the community we live in and I think any alcohol license has that. Secondly, you know frankly the reason we're here is, is to hear from you questions and concerns and certain things. We obviously are here because we feel like this Walgreens merits an alcohol license. It's a flagship store, it's going to be something that's very different. But having said that, we know we're going to Union Square, and we know it's something that maybe there are specific conditions that the community would like to see. And so we'd like to hear from you what those are as well. We've certainly been privy and seen some of the you know, protest letters that have come through, and we've also seen some of the conditions that were laid out by, in some of those letters. And I think with a lot of those, are, those are things that, frankly, we would be able to agree to. I can't tell you with specificity what those are right now, but... You know, as Katie will tell you, you know, this is our first meeting. We're hoping to have another community meeting probably right after the 4th of July. Um, somewhere around here, maybe we're going to have it here at the police station. We can get it, but somewhere, you know, locally. This is the first meeting that we're going to have, but we want to work with you to make sure that whatever conditions are placed are something that you feel are appropriate. Thank you. May I respond to that, please? Uh, I've been very concerned about the alcohol issue for years and years, maybe I'll uh, say around 30 years. Uh, the conditions are just boilerplate. Uh, you're a highly profitable operation. You don't need the alcohol license. You have, you have plenty of alcohol licenses. Uh, and, you know, alcohol availability is a big problem in low-income areas. Uh, regardless of how the product is priced. 
So, you know, that, that's an argument against us. And, and as far as agreeing to any conditions, well, you know, that's boilerplate. It's meaningless. Uh, we just don't need another alcohol license. And I guess it depends upon one's perspective, but I, I don't feel that uh, Walgreens has been a good civic citizen. Uh, you have far too many. This is uh, criticism that's been, uh, that's appeared in the uh, in the press. You have two. You have what? 61, 62 stores in San Francisco. You have a virtual monopoly. Uh, uh, you're not competitive. Uh, you set the prices, and we have to pay them. Uh, I just uh, <laughs> I. I I have a hard time. Okay, you start up to repeat yourself, David. I have so one, let's more go to one more question, and that is, I came with questions. Uh, will Walgreen consider purchasing another off-sale liquor license in the area to offset the impacts like CVS did when Cala location on uh, California and High? And of course, this is a community meeting. Who's taking notes? Nobody here is taking notes. Yeah, I mean, have you have oh, no, I've, no, we've been taking notes. Okay, I just want to But would you repeat that question? Because I'm not sure uh, I understand it. So. Will Walgreens consider purchasing another off-sale liquor license in the area to offset the impacts like CBS did when Cala, when the Cala location up on California and High did, did, did that for the neighborhood because the neighborhood felt the same way. So the about question is, well, would we buy two alcohol licenses? Yes. You, 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 buy, you buy one to take, take one, because you, you, you're using, one. yes, to take one away. Yes, you take one away from the neighborhood. So you buy one that you're going to use and you just buy one that you take yeah. away. Kind of like carbon offsets. I mean, we could certainly we could certainly take that back. I don't think any of us are in the position, but we'll take that back to the folks and ask them that question. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Excellent question. Susie, um, I, I did have a question about how many Walgreens stores currently have. There are, of the, of the current existing stores, I believe there are, um, and don't quote me on this, I believe there are uh, 12, 12 or 14. And you know what, if you let me email you back with the actual response. Yeah, we, can, we can get you the specifics. But I know the majority of stores have not. Okay, and, your, and your question was specific to San Francisco. Yes. San Francisco right? One we have time for one more question. Somebody who hasn't asked a question. Uh, when we state that you have 12 to 14 um, uh, liquor licenses, actually you inherited those liquor licenses when you bought um, right. Uh, right. Yeah. And also, we uh, prohibited, again, because it's in our boundaries, uh, the Rite Aid that was then turned was bought by Walgreens on the corner of Van Ness and Market. And we specifically stated to them not to have a local license when they opened their store there. And then you bought. So we've already had a precedent to our boundaries not to have a chain store within distance okay. of our, because uh, we have a, a Okay, thank you. So if you could just you mentioned receiving letters. If you could tell us an address, please, where people might send letters. Sure. Well, um, if if you so um, some folks have written letters of protest, and and moving forward as we continue the dialogue with the community, and we hope to uh, 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 further explain the, the the project moving forward and our and our commitment to the community, and, and therefore hopefully to alleviate those concerns. What we hope is that. In, you know, uh, moving forward, and as we say, as we continue to have further dialogues, that those folks will consider to uh, the process of withdrawing their um, their letter of protest. Um, I do have, uh, you know, if, if you were if you wish to do that, you could send it to the uh, California Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control at 1515 Clay Street, Suite 2208. Um, What's in in, it's in Oakland, yeah. California, uh, 94612. Um, I do have a copy of the withdrawal letter. If anybody is interested, please let me know. Um, I can also... One last question. Sure. And how many protests do you currently have? Um, I don't have that figure in front of me. I believe it was somewhere around 86. Okay. Her, um, I, I have, I have again, sort I, of. I can get that to you, and I and, and, and right. I. Her I have sort of a halfway compliment. 
they I have a white cop. Right, let me, let me, me ask the group, do you want to extend the agenda by five Let's minutes? Let's hear David for one minute. Let's hear How about one minute? One more, more cop. I, uh... <laughs> I think we love I think your fresh food okay. idea. So we will ask you please if you can stay. And sure. Talk yes. To people of course. Now, <laughs> now do so I have permission to speak? Okay. Okay. I think your fresh food idea is a very good one. I think it's okay. uh, beneficial, but I think your products are priced too high. All right. Bodega Park is the next uh, item up here. And I think we have a PowerPoint presentation. Can I just say one last thing and then we'll be out of here? Out of here. We definitely we want to do this follow-up meeting in early July. We'd love to follow up with you guys to just kind of set that up and make sure as many of the people here come to that meeting. Um, I don't know if we can just follow with one of you or get a copy of the yeah. Okay, I'm going to cut you off too, so <laughs> everybody. Next item. I'm also going to pass around my card. Okay. Hi everyone. I am uh, Trudy Barber with the Turn off the clip and start over. 